Well, good Thursday morning to you. Trucker Todd here and time for another video. I know it's rare, folks. Normally we put out a Wednesday video. Yesterday I was so busy I didn't get it done. So today we're putting out a special edition Thursday video. And today's topic is about a question I received on my last video. A really good question. Basically, I'm just going to paraphrase what the guy said. Trucker Todd, why are you still working at DART? You've had issues with them a couple of times, and uh, why not leave? The definition of insanity is uh, continuing to do the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. So, basically saying it's insane for me to stay at DART with all that's happened so far. And also, part B of that question how could I possibly recommend a company that has messed up my pay and that I've had so many issues with? Well, <laughs> I'm going to try to answer that question. I know you guys are going to want a 30 second answer. And unfortunately, I can't answer that question in 30 seconds. However, I will tell you this video is very similar to one I did when I was working at Roadrunner Freight and started having problems there. Guys ask me, then why don't you just leave Roadrunner why would you stay there uh, the the final part of that guy's message and it was a pretty long one was dart basically must just be kissing your tail because of your platform on YouTube or dart must have slid you a bunch of under the table money to make you still recommend them after all that's happened I'm gonna do my best to answer all of those questions but I can't do it in 30 seconds but what I can do is try to answer it as completely and fairly as I can. Before we continue, give this video a thumbs up. Look down below the video and subscribe. Also, there's a super thanks there. If you want to help the channel out and donate a couple of dollars, there's a spot to do that in the description below. My PayPal's there. My Cash App is there. Uh, feel free to make a donation there. If we get some money in there, pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna get some more camera equipment so that we can do more stuff. I really need a microphone so that I can do uh, some outside shots and stuff like that. So as the channel grows, the videos are gonna get better and better. Um, also, if you would like to know more about working at Dart Transit, there's a link down there where you can apply and find out about dedicated opportunities, lease purchase, and things like that. So I'm about to cue up the music and we're gonna jump into today's topic. Here we go. And this is why I do this, why I'm out here, why I keep that hammer down, flying by these road signs with home on my mind, with these wheels turning round for my family and for my kids, for this life I wanna live. This is why I do this. Alrighty, I'm back. Let's get the big elephant in the room right off the bat. Dart does not pay me anything beyond what they pay any other drivers. I'm on the same pay scale as everybody else. I'm on uh, the same everything as everybody else. I do get referrals if you guys use my name if you call the recruiter and tell them hey trucker todd referred me yeah it comes to me if you use my driver number yeah it comes to me if you use that link in the description yeah it comes to me but i'm paid the exact same referral bonus that you guys um, would receive if you were here and you referred somebody and i would refer guys here even if i wasn't receiving a referral bonus and the only way i can prove that to you guys is I speak with and talk to guys all the time that they say, hey, Trucker Todd, I already put my application in, but I got a few questions. Can you help me? Can you answer this? And I do it knowing right off the bat I'm not going to get a referral bonus. So the referral bonuses are nice when I get them. Uh, they're real sporadic. Sometimes some months I get several, and sometimes some months I don't get any. So it's definitely not the motivation behind these videos but it is kind of the cherry on top. Now, let's talk about 
this YouTube platform and does dark kiss my butt and uh, cater to whatever I want just because of the YouTube channel. Absolutely not. If I called them and asked for something ridiculous, they would laugh me out of there. They're not going to cave to uh, every wish and desire I have just because I've got a YouTube channel. Now, what they will do, and it's the same thing they'd do for you. If you call in and you've got a legitimate complaint, then they're going to do their best to make it right. That's part of the reason I recommend them. They're good people. And so um, the reason that I've got my way in a lot of these cases is not necessarily because they're afraid of YouTube, but more because I've had legitimate concerns and complaints that were easy to take a look at and determine that I might have been wronged, whether it was intentional or accidental. So I don't believe that uh, that they just bow to whatever I want. And I, I could cite you several examples of times when I didn't get my way. Uh, for example, a while back we got into, and it's been a while back, about a year ago, we got into a pretty heated exchange about truck speed. And there's videos on it. You can go back and watch. I ended up not getting my way. I ended up not winning that one. I wanted 70. They set me at 67 at the time. And uh, I decided it wasn't worth quitting over three miles an hour. Some of you would quit over three miles an hour. But for me, that wasn't the the sword I wanted to fall on over three, to, uh, three uh, miles per hour. So that's one. Another one, uh, you guys know on the OPI board, I get 70%. I've made it very clear in several videos that I feel like it ought to be somewhere between 75 and 80%. Um, I haven't got that. I'm still at 70%. Now, one thing they say, and it's a uh, valid deal on their side, Todd, we, we supplement that because your truck payments are cheaper and your insurances and things like that. That is very true. Um, I looked at a company when we were having our little spat uh, that the truck payments were almost exactly double what I'm paying now if you got a 2022 Peterbilt like what I currently have. That other company, and we're gonna talk about some of these other companies because you guys will, will message me and say, hey, what about this company? Hey, what about that company? This company wanted $2,000 for a toll transponder. Uh, when I worked at Roadrunner, I had my own toll transponder and I think I spent 250 or $300 on it, getting it directly on my own. And that's including the little savings account they make you start. So they were definitely price gouging on the toll transponder. I don't know why, if they had guys that weren't returning it when they quit, or if it's just an easy way to make money. You imagine doing that to a hundred drivers and them sticking that money in a savings account or some type of investment account. I'm sure they're drawing a lot of interest off of that and I see why they do it. And unsuspecting souls that don't know better are just gonna do it because they take it out so many dollars a week and the drivers don't realize how much they're paying. I've been amazed since I started doing this how many people don't know what they're spending for what. They've never read their contract. Everybody agrees you should read your contract but you'd be surprised how many people actually do. So, and I could go on and on. There's tons of examples of where I wanted something and Dart didn't cave to me. But if there's a payroll issue and I've got supporting evidence that I didn't get paid to something I should have got paid, or if, you know, if we've got something like that, then of course they're going to do it. Well, now one thing I really like about Dart is they're listening. Um, now, I just mentioned a whole bunch of times when I didn't get my way. I've mentioned some issues where I did get my way because I had documentation, things like that. So, but the one thing they're listening to is my constructive criticisms. Um, you know, they could uh, just blow me off, say, ah, he's a driver. He don't know what he's talking about. But we have real productive conversations. Um, I was... Uh, this week, for example, I had a very, very, very productive conversation with senior level management at Dart Transit. I'm not going to call anybody out or say any names. You guys know I don't do that. But we talked probably 10 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that. And 
I could have went longer if I wanted to, but I said my piece and we had a very productive conversation and I was very happy with, at the end of that phone call with the direction that the call went, with Dart's attitude regarding the matter, with senior, senior level management's attitude regarding the deal. And so um, as long as you're at a company, wherever it is, I don't care where you're working, as long as those communication lines are open and you're having productive conversations, then that's a place you want to stay. And that's a place you can recommend. Now let's talk about another reason. Well, Todd, why are you having so many problems to begin with there in the first place? Well, there's a couple of things. For one thing, and this is going to happen at any company, since COVID, post-COVID, offices are shorter staffed than what they were before. Also, offices are having a lot more turnover than they've ever had before. So you've got new people doing new jobs and less people to do the jobs than what there were before. And so they're doing the best they can, but they're human. Just like you make mistakes sometimes, they make mistakes sometimes. And guys are saying, well, Trigger Todd, why don't you quit? Well, because they're human, they make mistakes. Would I want them to fire me every time I made a mistake? You know, I just heard an interesting statistic this week. Over 90% of people try something one to five times and if they don't succeed, they quit. And uh, obviously I've done several lease purchases with several different companies. I've been successful at several, at almost all of them, but I've left for whatever reason. Um, and so I said all of that to say this, some of you guys quit way too quick. You have one little tiff and you're out the door. And I work on these things. You know, if I have an issue with Dart, it's weeks before you guys find out about it because I work behind the scenes to try to resolve it. Me getting on here and getting in the mud with Dart does absolutely nobody any good. Because if they fix the problem, then I've just slammed them for no reason. Or unfairly at the minimum. If, uh, if they fired me for running a car off the road, and then two weeks later, they found out I never ran a car off the road and said, hey, we'd like to bring you back. Well, at that point, the damage is already done. I've been fired. I've been gone two weeks, and now they want to bring me back. Same thing here. You know, I really hated that I quit and left for those eight days and then come back, but the damage was already done. That was eight days I didn't have income, um, and some of it was optional. I had over three dozen job offers. Um, I could have went somewhere else. I was a little burnt out and frustrated, so I took some time off at home. Um, and so, but I, not, I don't want to ramble here. I don't want to make more of this than, than what it is. But some of you quit way too soon. I've had guys call me, not just with Dart, but with other companies. Work there a week and something goes wrong. They blow out a tire. Their alternator goes out and they're ready to quit already. A def level sensor those seem to go out whether you got a Freightliner or Kenworth that seems to be a common problem but guys want to quit after over the silliest things and uh, you got to stick it out sometimes it's like a marriage do you get a divorce the first time you have a disagreement with your spouse if you do you're probably one of these people that's been married four or five times and same thing I used to have a neighbor you go back and watch the old Roadrunner videos, I used to have a neighbor that every time I came to home for home time, he had a new trucking job. And uh, my wife used to call me when, when I was out on the road and she'd be like, hey, the neighbor's working here now. Hey, the neighbor's working there now. And we kind of got a laugh out of it. I don't see how he got hired so many places. And uh, I always thought maybe he was doing it for the sign-on bonus or the orientation money. And then he'd quit and go to another company. There's a very popular YouTuber that does this. About every three or four months, he's at a new company and it gives him videos he can do about orientation, the new truck, the hotel he stayed in, the rental car. Uh, he can give a 90 day review and then all of a sudden he's at another company. And uh, I'm not that way. Um, there is never gonna be a company that I work for that I have absolutely nothing that I don't wish was different or there's not something that I don't like about the company. Uh, even if I worked for myself and had my own authority, 
there'd be things I didn't like about the way I was doing things or handling things. So I'm on the OPI board, as you guys know, and almost all the problems I've had is because it's not normal for DART. It's not their normal way of doing things. They have a lot of drop and hook and dispatch contract freight. And here I am on the spot market, kind of doing my own thing. So they're getting better, they're adapting. And as long as they're listening and trying to improve, I'm gonna hang in there with them. And speaking of hanging in there with them, I appreciate you guys hanging in here with me, watching all the thumbs up, all the subscribing, all the comments. I'm gonna wrap this thing up. Uh, I'm gonna be weird also and try to put out a Friday video. I'm trying to, I'm still gathering information for it, waiting for a couple of people to email me back. But if I get everything I'm waiting for, there will be a Friday video. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to wrap this up. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.